discovery of our cosmic future. As J Professor Haldane used to say, the universe is not just stranger than we imagine, it's stranger than we can imagine. So if you think that all this is going on in these gigantic fields of gravity and light with you in mind, then you really do have a self-centeredness problem. 100,000 years, people have been, our species have been around on, on this speck. Born, usually dying, actually a great number of them in childbirth wouldn't have got beyond being born. For the first 80 or so, 90 or so thousand years, nearly 100, not living more than 25 to 30 years at the most, then probably dying of their teeth, if they were lucky, or of the other needless mammalian things that show us that we bear the stamp as Darwin put it of our lowly origin, the appendix we don't need anymore, innumerable other shortcomings of our design, we're designed to live on the savanna that we've escaped from, um, a terrible d disease, suffering, misery, malnutrition, and fear. Where do the earthquakes come from? Why is there an eclipse? What are the shooting stars doing? And awful cults of sacrifice to try and ward off what are in fact natural events, and war, and rape, and the kidnap of other peoples, and the enslavement of them. All of this goes on, gradually, gradually inching up to the point where you can brew beer, a breakthrough in my view, um, <laughs> domesticate animals, separate one kind of corn from another, so very millimetrical progress, but r terrible struggle, sacrifice, pain, misery, and above all, fear and ignorance. And you have to believe this if you believe in monotheism. For the first 97, 98,000 of this, heaven watches with indifference. Oh, there they go again. <laughs> They've all, this, that whole civilization has just died out. Well, what are you going to do? They're raping each other again. They've, they've, they're poisoning. The, they think that the other tribe has poisoned the well, so they're going to kill all their children. All this, just watch all that. 3,000 years ago at the most, it's decided, no, we've got to intervene now. <laughs> you have to believe it. You have to believe it. And the revelation is, must, be, must be personal, must appear. So we'll pick the most backward the most barbaric, the most illiterate, the most superstitious and the most savage people we can find in the most stony area of the, of the world. We won't appear to the Chinese who can already read. <laughs> we won't appear in the Indus Valley where they know a thing or two and they're already, you know, they're very far of us. No. We'll, we'll appear to this brutal, enslaved, hopeless, superstitious crowd and will force them to cut their way through every all of their neighbors with slaughter, genocide and racism and settle on the only part of the Middle East where there's no oil. <laughs> and all subsequent revelations occur in the same district. And without this we wouldn't know right from wrong. Now. must believe something like that happened or did not in order to address the whole question of where monotheism comes from. I would say it can't be proved that that isn't how we came to understand um, the, the, the morality and the need for it. But I would regard it in the light of the other evidence I've touched upon as being in the very highest degree improbable that that is the way we discovered how to think. Uh, how to decide how to live with one another, what our duties are uh, to each other, and so forth. And I submit it to you in all... No, I'm not going to say humility. Um, I just submit it to you, okay? <laughs> and again, if this was the plan, was it made by someone who likes us? Well, that's another question. And if so, why have 99.9% .9 of all the other species that have ever been created uh, already died out and part of what plan was that you see if uh, it is a plan or a design and one cannot positively prove that it is not it only restates the original problem the planner must be either very capricious 
really toying with his with his creation. Very or very and or very clumsy, very tinkering, and fantastically wasteful. Throw away 99.9% .9 of what you've made. Or very cruel and very callous, or just perhaps very indifferent, or some combination of all the above. And so it's no good saying that he moves in mysterious ways. Or that he has purposes that are opaque to us, because even that kind of evasion has to make itself predicate on the assumption that the person saying this knows more than I do about the supernatural. And I haven't yet met anyone who does have a private line to the creator of the, of the sort that would be required even to speculate about it. Um, I've never met, in other words, I've never met anyone in holy orders or out of it who isn't also a primate. And neither have you. Claiming to know more than a primate can possibly know, and he's showing that he knows much less than most primates probably should. So if, if someone says to me, and I've heard it in my travels, without the dear leader, we are lost. We are nothing. Um, it used to be said in Italy in the Mussolini period, il duce ha sempre ragione. The leader is always right. Mussolini is always right. Uh, ein Reich, ein Volk, ein Führer. Only, we only need one leader, one people and um, one regime. All of this has the smack of the totalitarian. And without the leader, we'd be lost. We'd be, have no choice but to commit suicide. I say, we've come this far with Jim. Let's drink it now. <laughs> without him, we're nothing. With most of those sort of invocations, one hears instantly, or, or rather, I would say one smells instantly the unmistakable reek stench of the totalitarian temptation. And we, we, we should be armored, it should be innate in us to resist it. And where it isn't, we should learn how to build it up as a matter of survival. Um, but instead, religious morality asks us to overcome doubt, to overcome skepticism, to leave it behind, to suspect the faculty that of ours is the most precious of all, the ability to philosophize the ability to think for ourselves, the ability to challenge existing authority. No, that's all to be distrusted. That could be a temptation. The evil one, it's not an accident, says that it's the tree of knowledge of good and evil that at all costs you must avoid, because anything to do with knowledge could immediately turn uh, profane. All we know is that we know much less and less, but at least we know less and less about much more and more. So is this a time to say we don't need any further inquiry? All we need is faith in the boss. I would say not. No, I say what Socrates taught me is exactly that the definition of an educated person is knowing how little they know and being modest and humble in that sense, not in the sense of self-abnegation, but saying, please give me the strength to realize that I'm, that I'm only on the first step of a voyage of, of inquiry and discovery. And that method is the one that has set more people free than any faith.